This next project was designed and created by Mary Kate McDevitt. She's a phenomenal illustrator that has written one of my favorite books, Illustration Workshop. I'm going to be pulling a lot of information that I'm sharing with you today from this book. So if you enjoy what you're hearing, I recommend you buying this book and adding it to your library at home. Now, if you've ever wondered what illustration is, illustration is just a fancy name for commercial art. A common question that we always hear is, what's the difference between illustration and drawing? Simply put, illustrators are hired to create art for commercial use. Both drawing and illustration can be commissioned and have a concept and personal style, but when a drawing is created for a commercial context, such as a book, magazine, advertisement, a product packaging or branding, then it's called an illustration. Many illustrators spend a lot of time and years developing their personal style. Creating your own personal style doesn't always come naturally. One way to find your style is going to be by gathering a lot of inspiration from all areas of art and design. We're going to study a wide variety of artists and look for a common thread amongst all the artists you like by looking for line qualities, color palettes, or materials that you're constantly drawn to. And when we're looking at all these different artists and artworks, it's best to look at a wide variety of illustrators and artists to keep your influences varied and diverse. We're gonna study how they use line, color, and texture and experiment ourselves with our own methods of image making to find what feels right for us. Illustration involves thinking both like an artist and a problem solver. One of the project ideas that you guys can choose from is to design a book cover. You're going to have to consider the context of the book and how it's going to fuel the illustration you design on the front cover. Considering the context of your illustration and creating a concept that addresses it elevates your work to something that is amazing. A strong concept is important and can make an otherwise okay illustration excellent. Illustrations are most successful when style and concept work together. Whenever you begin designing this illustration, it's going to be important to define the target audience you're trying to appeal to. Consider how the style of your illustration affects and appeals to different audiences. For example, if you have a playful illustration style, perhaps your work primarily appeals to families or children. But let's say a project is targeted squarely to adults. How might you adjust your style or concept to better reach that audience? Something Sometimes something as simple as adjusting your color palette can help reach a new audience. So it's going to be important that you stay flexible in your style so you don't corner yourself into one target audience. So let's take a quick look at the overview of the process of what you were going to be doing throughout now until the very end of this project. Today, you're gonna to begin by reading through the project brief. A brief normally for an illustrator comes from a client or art director. In your case, it's coming from me, your teacher. And a brief defines the goals of the project. So you have a reference to consult as you work. You're going to want to reference this early and often throughout the project. The brief will include dimensions, background information, such as a target audience, and sometimes images of inspiration. After reading the brief, you're then gonna be entering the brainstorming stage of the project. The first thing to do when you are starting a project is to get your ideas flowing by approaching it from every angle, keeping in mind the goals set out in the brief. Brainstorming for us is going to include lists, mind maps, research, two different types of inspiration boards, um, one's just going to be text, the other is going to be reference imagery and just artists and really interesting book design covers that you like. And all of this exploration will help narrow the focus of your project. When you guys are in this exploratory stage, be sure to push yourself. 
This is the time to collect inspiration based on the brief and to help visualize how this project will look. After the brainstorming stage, then we'll begin drawing out our thumbnails, applying different composition techniques. Thumbnails are small sketches that lay out the basic composition of the illustration and visually express the concept. This is the stage where you're gonna start putting your ideas together and laying the groundwork for your illustration. You will have to refer to the brief for dimensions as well as your brainstorming. Detail is not important at this stage. You just wanna create a composition to refer to when you begin your sketches. So start loose and be sure to consider positive and negative space along with your concept, hierarchy, composition, and work in proportion to the dimensions of the project brief. After you complete your thumbnails, you're gonna move on to your sketches. Sketches are more detailed versions of the thumbnails but still remain loose and rough. And you want to choose thumbnails that reflect your favorite concepts. At this stage, you're gonna to want to seek out any opportunities to strengthen your composition. So for example, you know, change a scale, changing a scale can create a more dynamic composition than when everything is at the same scale. Try to look out for awkward tangents and spaces and always remember to check the spelling if you're including like a title of a novel in there. The sketch at this stage is still gonna be rough when we get there. Um, so we'll just be making it with a light pencil. When we get to the revised sketches, a revised sketch is just a redrawing of your sketch so that it's fresh and new. It just allows you to see a close approximation of what the final is going to look like. Once we have a revised sketch, then we can start finalizing our color. Finalizing is the most fun and final step because this is the stage where you get to add in the color palette that you've chosen. If you're having trouble selecting appropriate colors, then you're gonna to have to refer back to your inspiration images and um, try to find a color palette from one of them to use for the project. After you finalize color, then we get to make the final drawing. And at this point, your illustration is going to be really easy to complete because your sketch is going to be perfect. You're going to know exactly where you're gonna be putting your color and um, it's going to just look great. And then you can take pictures of it and show it off to all your friends and family and have them tell you how amazing you are. So let's just pause and let's look at the two project options you have to choose from. So your first option for this final drawing is to illustrate a book cover. So the brief says that this assignment is to create an illustration for the cover of a book of your choosing. Book covers should have an eye-catching illustration that speaks to the book's content, a legible title, and the author's name. The challenge is as follows. The biggest challenge is capturing the essence of the book while keeping it simple and eye-catching. Choose a book that you are familiar with and you'll be able to pull more unique defining moments from the book rather than the more obvious parts. Find a common thread from the book that could be the key to your unique book cover concept. Now here's a fun idea. If you guys um, don't want to draw from a book that you've read, if you want to create your own book and story in your mind and illustrate that, I'm totally fine with that. So if you want to do like a story about like robots invading Edinburgh and you call it like, I don't know, Edinburgh Doomsday or something, then you could create an illustration book on like for a fake book and just write your name as the author, author, excuse me. So a couple of things that you need to include though with whatever you decide to do is that you need to have an original illustration for a book cover and that book cover should include a title and the author's name. The size of your drawing has to be five inches by seven inches. And if you're feeling stuck on maybe what type of genre book to do, they've given you suggestions here. You could do a biography, a thriller, kids book, mystery, romance, or a novel. Your second project option is to do an illustrated poem or short story. So if you didn't like the book novel idea, you can choose this one instead. For this assignment, choose a short story or poem and create an illustration that corresponds with the text. This illustration would be featured in a collection of several short stories or poems. So consider how the text would interact with the art. Now really, you're not going to be like putting it with other work. You're just going to be seeing this one thing. So um, just keep that in the back of your head. Now, depending on the length of your chosen piece, you may hand letter the text so it fits with the art 
or you could just have it be a straight illustration with no text. The biggest challenge with this assignment is choosing the right moments of the story or poem to illustrate. The illustration doesn't have to be literal, especially if the writing isn't literal, but it should convey the content while also representing your unique style. Consider how the illustration will be featured with the text. Will the illustration act as a frame for the text, run, along the, run alongside the text, or live on its own on the page? What to include? Um, you're gonna have to include an original illustration for a short story or poem, and then you have the option of adding um, the hand lettering quote from the text in there, um, but you don't have to. You can just have it be a basic drawing that you know reveals the story of the poem or the story itself. This project also has the same dimensions as the book novel. Um, it is needing to be five inches by seven inches. If you're feeling stuck on different composition layouts, they've given you some ideas there. Throughout this project, we're going to be referencing um, a lot of terms. So I have a glossary of terms here that we need to review. You're going to be quizzed on this today. So you're going to want to um, pay attention and take notes. So the first one, anthropomorphism. That is when um, you're attributing human traits or characteristics to non-human entities. This is a very common thing to do for illustration where they'll take an inanimate object like a lemon and they'll add arms and legs and little faces on it so it looks like it's like a live character. And it's super fun to do and can make your drawings look super cute. A brief outlines the goal of the assignment, dimensions, and other specific details to consider. Composition is the arrangement of a layout. Concept, an idea formed by combining research and approach. Contour, the profile or outline of a subject or object. Focal point, the primary place that drives the eye in a composition. Imagery, a collection of visuals relating to a concept. Mind map, a way of brainstorming that is organized by relationships, starting with a single word or concept and continually branching out with words that relate to the one preceding it. Palette, an arrangement of colors chosen to match the tone of the assignment. Rough or rough out means to loosely sketch without scrutinizing style and composition. Style is a personal artistic approach to illustration. Tangent, when lines or shapes touch without intersecting or overlapping in an awkward manner. And then thumbnails, small rough sketches that capture the desired concept in composition. Take a screenshot of this because you're going to have to study it and know it to do well on the quiz. So today, this is what I want you to do. One, play the Kahoot quiz to review the glossary terms we just discussed. I would like you to review both project briefs, the illustrated book cover and the poem and short story. Then I want you to choose the project you want to do and begin brainstorming what story and poem you want to illustrate. Once you've done that, you're prepared for what we're going to do tomorrow.